Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and we're taking another look again at the BitX, but I wanna go over how to manage it from your computer once you have it connected to your Wi-Fi, but we're, we're getting around 400 giga hash at around 29 watts per tera hash. We can see the accepted shares, and this little LCD will swap between metrics here in just a moment, giving us our accepted shares, our chip temperature at 40 degrees, our fan speed at 82, and our voltage at 11.67 as well as our IP and our current version number. But on the computer, we can do a little bit more if we log into this particular IP or whatever IP assigned to your device. And let's go over that right now. Now, really quickly, I just want to give a huge shout out to Decentral who helped us obtain this bit axe that we're using today. And there's a lot smarter people out there on Twitter or the crypto universe that I would recommend you following and checking out. But the link to Decentral, which is an affiliate link, will be down in the description, as well as a user called SKOT. I believe you pronounce it a different way. It's got 9,000, SCOT, whatever you wanna say. I, I, I pronounce things incorrectly all the time. Either way, very intelligent individual. They've been posting updates and there've been a number of people that have been able to push these things even further. But we have the OS here. All we got to do is go to the IP address of the device, right? Once it's connected to your Wi-Fi or network. And we can see our power consumption. We can see our input voltage. We can see our frequency, our core voltage, our fan speed, and our chip temperature. Right now in my house, we're averaging around 40 degrees Celsius. Now, while it's not a fault of the BitX uh, unit itself, I am having trouble with this particular device staying connected to the Wi-Fi long term. And I think it's because of our smart router, Smart Connect, right, where it connects to either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. So just be mindful of that, that maybe your router might be have, giving your BitX a hard time. However, may, maybe it's just mine. Maybe it's something I'm doing. Maybe it's just something on my network that it doesn't like in particular. So just know that. But... We saw the hash rate. We're seeing a little over 400 giga hash or so, 428. That's basically 27 watts per tera hash. And if we go to settings, we can adjust a number of things. Not only our Wi-Fi, not only our wallet, not only the pool and port, but also the overclock settings. So down here towards the bottom, you can see frequency, and that's a drop down, where we can drop it down to 400 megahertz, or we can boost it up to 575 megahertz. And if we look at this Twitter post here, they uh they were able to get about 527 giga hash and they're actually doing a lot better than i would which is 20 watts per tera hash which is very interesting not sure what clock setting they're using but we, because we're only sitting around 40 degrees celsius uh i don't know what the thermal max is for this particular chip we could probably go look that up because it is the 1366 and according to Bitmain support website, the PCB max temperature is 75 degrees Celsius. Now with the BitAx, we can only see the chip temperature, but I can assume that if the chip's at 40 degrees Celsius, the PCB is not too far behind, but you realistically stay as far away from 75 or 80 degrees Celsius as you can on this particular device. And there's plenty of uh, experts or more knowledgeable individuals than myself um, and guys, not only provided by the central, but Scott, um, also you got Bitmaker, and there's so many others that I can't name off the top of my head, but I follow them on Twitter. So make sure you check them out. But we could see we could push the frequency higher. And if you're going to step it up, I would step it up one by one, you know, start off with 500, test for an hour, 525, test for an hour, so on and so forth. But obviously, keep it in mind that you're going to need to increase the voltage at a certain point. Obviously, it's going to depend upon a number of variables, environmental conditions, thermal conditions, silicon lottery. But if we start pushing 525 and 1200 is becoming unstable, maybe we need to do 1250, so on and so forth. But the goal is, again, just like everything else in crypto mining, efficiency. Try to get the best hash with the low amount of wattage uh, as possible. We can see here that Scott was getting uh, 20 uh, watts per tera hash so that's not bad whatsoever we can also monitor this miner at the pool uh, but my uptime has been irregular due to wi-fi connectivity that's for something for me to figure out you might not experience this and you can see also on the settings page there's a firmware update section it needs to be the esp miner.bin file and i will have links to their github because they got some great guides out there because you you can go to decentral 
and buy this unit outright. You can get the 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 nice little S9 3D printed uh the you know uh shell and everything. But these guys do have guides out there for you to do this on your own, especially the PCB design. I believe Techman TY did uh did his own as well. Uh guides on you know what you need because you need five volt power, you know, the fan. You can see they used the Noctua fan here instead of what's on there now or what's on mine. Uh, you know, programming with the ESP miner or the ESP32 programmer, PCB ordering tips, assembly ordering tips, lots of good information out there. Uh, and there's even a fork, uh, I believe, because I don't know if the link changed or what, but basically there's there's updated versions or releases. And we can see the releases in the lower right-hand corner. I'll link this down in the description as well um, as everybody that I would recommend you check out. But we're on current version 2.0.4, okay? So I'm on version 2 flat, but there's already 2.0.4. By the time you watch this, there might be a 2.05 or 6 or 7 or whatever. So don't update. If it's if it's not broke, don't fix it. I understand that saying. Uh, but if you know how to update the miner, and because this makes it a little bit easy with this little uh, Axe OS firmware, uh, you can just go ahead and grab the file, right? Because we need this ESP-miner.bin. We can grab the file and we can update our miner accordingly. Otherwise, the guide provided by incredible individuals such as this uh, walks you through not only that, but how to update via Python and so on and so forth or the ESP uh, programmer, okay? And this will be linked down in the description. But I'm just going to go ahead and grab this file. I already have it downloaded. And then we're going to go ahead and update this firmware. Again, we're on version 2 right now. All right, so if I move out of your way here, you'll see in the upper left or the upper right, we have the uh, the file we need. Let's go back here, choose, select it. And there's also an ESP Miner Factory. I wonder what that is. Uh, we'll probably have to do a little bit of research and look into that. But I believe we just need either or or just the ESP dash miner. I will find out. Let's see if we brick our device. Nope, it was just that easy of choosing a file and we're already on version 2.04 if we go back to settings here all i did was click choose file select the file and as soon as we did it it goes it shows a screen matter of fact we probably do it again but um it says working and then after a few seconds that will go away you can see the firmware update right down here in the bottom left that's going to do its thing and then it's going to restart Go straight back to the home page by clicking the Axe OS in the top left. Um, I know a lot of people that have built their own are basically programming it themselves using the ESP32 programmer, similar to what I showed you with the Nerd Miner, right? Similar to what I showed you there. Um, but I'm going to the logs and I can see already it's already starting to accept shares. So maybe this might improve my Wi Fi connectivity. Maybe I might be a little bit more stable. Maybe we don't have to push the voltage too high. But it's cool to see this little device that you, the at-home user, can get involved in, have your own Bitcoin lottery miner with an actual chip, right? So the BM1366 is a chip from a relatively newish ASIC miner. It may not be the S21, which stay tuned because there's probably BitAx is coming out with those chips as well. Uh, but you can, uh, you know, at least participate and enjoy. And this would be a fun little gift to give to, for example, one of my boys or a family member or somebody that's just wanting to get into it. it, it you, the chances of hitting a Bitcoin block are so low right now, but it's still a chance out there. That's why they call them lottery Bitcoin miners. At least that's a term I continue to use, but there's still a chance out there. And I just wanted to share this experience or this video with you. Do me a favor though. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And on the way out, hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification button to stay up to date as well as check out additional links that help support the channel and what we do here like the link down in the description to the central where you can go and buy one of these units does provide a kickback to the channel. And I greatly appreciate your support. Besides that, you just have yourself a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.